the voice of Sherry. ASEAN Dailies, first and foremost news from Southeast Asia. Hello, welcome to Drian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. So Grace, how do you go to work every day? I take Uber every day. It is quite comfortable and I like it that it is very convenient. Why do you ask? Well, you should feel very lucky because in developing countries like Cambodia, for example, sweatshop workers have to ride behind an open pick truck to go to the factory to work. Pick truck? Oh, that's bad. I think as consumers, we need to be more responsible of our action. Perhaps stop buying fashion from clothing shops and that treated their workers like um, herded animals. Yeah, they, I, I couldn't agree more. We need to stop the vicious cycle. Anyway, on ASEAN Daily, we will bring you daily updates and commentaries on issues and events that are impacting this region. I'm your host, Arlene Tan. And I'm Grace Cho. And on this Monday, 22nd of February 2016, we'll bring you the latest social culture and trends from Southeast Asia. Our top story today, the ratification of the ASEAN Open Skies Agreement or MAAS will lead to greater competition in the ASEAN aviation market and leading the pack of foreign airlines that are looking into expanding its operation in the country is Singapore Airlines. So MAAS, or can I just say it, MAAS? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's part of the ASEAN Roadmap for Integration for of Air Transportation Services, essentially laying down on the foundation for the envisioned ASEAN single aviation market, which would in turn foster seamless connectivity within the region. Well, why is this important? One of the reasons is tourism. Mm -hmm. The number of tourists coming into ASEAN is projected to hit 145 million by 2023. That's a lot of population we're talking about there. Mm -hmm. And Singapore Airlines may further expand its operations in the Philippines after President Aquino signed Protocols 5 and 6 of the ASEAN Multilateral Agreement in Air Services or MAS. M-A-A-S oh, on, February. <laughs> yeah. on the February 3rd. Well, what would this actually translate into? Mars would definitely <laughs> allow designated carriers of ASEAN countries to operate unlimited flights mm. between capitals, leading to better connectivity and more competitive fares and services. So besides that, it will be a boon for ASEAN nations, enhance the regional trade and investment opportunities for ASEAN businesses. It will also provide better access to ASEAN uh, Southeast Asian individuals such as professionals professionals, students who wish to explore job and educational opportunities in the region. Well, according to Mr. Steve Lien, President of Honeywell Aerospace Asia Pacific, the open skies is very important for the aviation community and the region across the globe that when there is an open skies policy, it just encourages traffic. So the more competition, the more traffic, the better the service the fares offer to the passengers, which makes it a very good proposition for flying public and ultimately for economies across the region. So in this case, traffic is actually a good thing, <laughs> not a bad thing. <laughs> but a more liberalized market comes with its own set of challenges. Mm -hmm. With security as a main concern, one key task lies in adopting a more homogeneous level of security standards and checks across ASEAN. So infrastructure support is another challenge here. One is the ground infrastructure, its runways, its airport. The second is the air side infrastructure, which means air traffic and the, how the air traffic is controlled by the relevant authorities. Mm -hmm. Anyway, from sky high, we move down to the ground. The next news is about, guess what? Cats. What? But not small cats. Big cats. I'm talking about tigers. Right. Well, good news for the tiger population because it has increased thanks to intense protection measures taken in Southeast Asia. This is according to a new study by the Wildlife Conservation Society or WCS. 
So to be exact, right, this is due to an enhanced petrol system in the Huai Ka King Wildlife Sanctuary, or HKK, which was first set up in 2005. Although it is the only site in Southeast Asia where researchers have confirmed tiger populations are growing. Mm. The researchers are actually quite happy mm. and they are calling this uh, the tiger's comeback as an outstanding conservation success since wildlife has been struggling for quite some time in the area. However, it will take another 10 to 15 years for, of intensive protection. Wow. So between um, 2005 and 2012, monitoring programs including camera trap surveys identified 90 distinct individual tigers and improvement in tiger survival from low uh, 35 numbers of tiger. Oh, I'm happy about mm-hmm. it. Double the numbers. Mm-hmm. The entire wildlife population of the Indo-Chinese tiger subspecies was estimated as just 350 animals in 2010 mm. and it is under major threats by commercialization. Yeah, especially commercial tiger breeding industry which supports cruel and inhumane tourist attractions such as the infamous Tiger Temple. Well, I haven't been there yet but I wonder why not using tigers in the temple to breed more tigers for conservation? <laughs> that also makes sense there. <laughs> well, the tigers from this industry are useless for conservation purpose due to rampant inbreeding um, and the poor uh, husbandry as well. Also, products are made from wild animals such as tigers are more valued in Asian culture. I guess we shouldn't be too optimistic and perhaps we should push more efforts mm. at wildlife tiger conservation. For sure. This was also uh, expressed by wildlife investigator uh, J.A. Mills, author of Blood of the Tiger. She added, I caution optimism for wild tigers based on reports like this. The key takeaway for me is this is the only site in Southeast Asia where tigers are confirmed to be increasing in population. That's scary. Mm-hmm. Anyway, another news was also not a cause of optimism. Remember a couple of years ago, there was a news report about the first transgender school opening in Indonesia? <laughs> well, recently it was visited by, guess what, hardliners. Really? Mm-hmm. Dozens of um, the Islamic Jihad Front or FGI, FJI members visited al Fata Islamic Boarding School for transgender students in Sayangan Hamlet, uh, Kota Jere District in the Jogja. According to FGI Commander Abdul Hamdan, he said that we just wanted to check whether they were conducting deviant acts. We wanted to straighten it out. Mm. Uh, but here the good thing is the hardliners were there too late as they found the school emptied after the students were evacuated by police for security reasons. Mm. But they managed to hand over a letter to the Hamlet chief mm. Gatot Indri Yanto calling on the transgender students to quote unquote return to the right way. So transgender school refused to bow down the, to the acts of the intimidation by the hardliners. Instead, school uh, chairperson Chinta Ratri reported the group to the police for intimidation. Well, just a bit of a background about the school. It, it was founded by the late Mar Yani in mm. 2008, a transgender herself, and was previously located in Noto Yudan. The school moved to Ratri's house after Mar Yani passed away in March 2014. So the school's uh, supervisory board member, Abdul Muhammad re- deplored the FJI's actions, calling on the groups to respect the religious right of transgender people. That's all from our ASEAN Daily today. Thank you for tuning in to our Durian ASEAN with Grace Jo and Arlene Tan. For more updates on Southeast Asia, please go to our website at durianasean.com. If you're on the go, you can always download our tune-in app on your mobile. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels at Durian ASEAN and Durian ASEAN TV. Don't forget to follow us on our Facebook page, Twitter and Instagram. We always welcome feedbacks from our listeners. Stay tuned with us and Daily by tomorrow, Tuesday, same time at 12 to 1 p.m. on GMT Plus 8. Join ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. You're now listening to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing.